All right, let's talk about a huge fundamental problem with large language models. I mean, these things are incredibly powerful, right? But they have this one big weakness, a massive knowledge gap. See, if some piece of information wasn't in its original training data, poof, it just doesn't know it, can't recall it. This creates a massive challenge for AI. And today, we're gonna dig into two totally different ways to solve it. I mean, really think about what this means. It means they're totally blind to anything that's happened since their training was finished. So, you know, recent news, forget about it. And they have absolutely no clue about private internal information, like your company's product manuals or a specific customer's history. So, how do we actually fix this? So here's how we're gonna break it all down. First, we'll really nail down this knowledge problem. Then, we'll look at the standard solution that everyone uses called RAG and a simpler, newer alternative called CAG. After that, we'll put them head to head in a showdown and wrap up with a simple way to figure out which tool is right for you. Okay, first things first, let's get super clear on what this core challenge really is. You know, at its heart, an LLM's knowledge is basically frozen in time. If you ask it, hey, who won the 2025 Oscar for Best Picture, it's gonna have no idea. That event is way outside its training data. And the same thing goes for your company's latest sales report. This blind spot is exactly why we need to give these models a little bit of a helping hand. So, how have we traditionally tackled this problem? Well, for years, the go-to answer, the industry standard, has been a technique called Retrieval Augmented Generation, or as everyone calls it, RAG. And honestly, the name pretty much says it all. You take a user's question, you retrieve the relevant facts from some external knowledge base, think of it like a digital library of documents, and then you use that information to augment the model's brain, basically, before it generates the answer. This diagram shows us exactly how RAG works. Just look at the top half. See the query, Q1? Instead of going straight to the LLM, it first makes a pit stop at a retrieval model. That model zips over to a knowledge base and pulls out the most relevant piece of info it can find, which we're calling K1. Then, and only then, are both the original question and that little nugget of knowledge sent over to the LLM to create the final answer, A1. It's a two-step process, like a just-in-time delivery system for facts. But now, with these new models that can handle absolutely massive amounts of text, a new challenger has entered the ring, Cache Augmented Generation, or CAG. Now, the whole idea behind CAG is just radically different. Instead of fetching information when a question is asked, you preload the entire knowledge base into the model's context window all at once. You just, you feed the model everything right up front. And right here, we can see the difference in action. Focus on the bottom half of the diagram. The whole knowledge base is pre-computed into something called a knowledge cache. So now, when a query like Q1 comes in, it's just tacked on to this already loaded cache and sent to the LLM. You see what's missing? The whole retrieval model is gone. The process is streamlined down to a single step when it's time to answer. This knowledge cache thing has a technical name. It's called the KV cache or key value cache. The easiest way to think about it is that it's just the model's internal memory after it has digested all that information you gave it up front. It's kind of like the model has already read all your documents and has them memorized, just waiting for you to ask a question. Okay, so now we have two very different ways of doing things. One retrieves information on the fly, the other preloads everything. Let's put them head to head and see how they really stack up on the stuff that actually matters. And this really gets us to the core trade-off between them. RAG's superpower is scalability. I mean, because you're only retrieving little chunks at a time, your knowledge base can have millions of documents, no problem. CAG, on the other hand, is completely limited by the LLM's context window size. Everything has to fit inside. And when it comes to keeping your data fresh, RAG is super nimble. You just update your index. But with CAG, any little change to your source documents means you have to recompute the entire cache from scratch, which, trust me, can be a huge pain. But what about accuracy? I mean, that's what really counts, right? Well, if you look at the data, one thing just jumps right out at you. CAG consistently gets a higher accuracy score. So, why is that? It's actually pretty simple. RAG's biggest weakness is its retriever. If that retriever grabs the wrong document, the LLM gets garbage in, and it's going to give you garbage out. CAG completely sidesteps that problem. It gets rid of that point of failure. The information is guaranteed to be in the context. It's just a matter of the model being smart enough to find it. Now, let's talk about speed. Just imagine you ask a question that needs to sift through a whole bunch of documents. Without pre-caching all that knowledge, the time it takes to generate a response can be a whopping 94.3 seconds. For a user waiting for an answer, that's an eternity. But with CAG, 
By pre-computing that KV cache and totally eliminating the retrieval step, that time plummets to just 2.3 seconds. I mean, that is a massive, massive improvement in latency. The speed boost comes from having the knowledge already memorized by the model, which makes answering the question incredibly fast. So, with all these trade-offs in mind, you know, scalability versus speed, flexibility versus simplicity, how in the world do you choose the right tool for your specific project? Okay, let's play a quick game. First up, you're building an IT help desk bot. Its entire brain is a single 200-page product manual that only gets updated maybe a couple of times a year. What do you choose, RAG or CAG? Yeah, for this one, it's definitely CAG. I mean, the knowledge base is small, it'll easily fit into a modern context window, and the information is static, so you're not gonna be constantly recomputing the cache. But most importantly, for a help desk bot, a fast response time is absolutely critical for a good user experience, and that is CAG's biggest strength. All right, scenario number two, a research assistant for a law firm. This tool needs to search through thousands of legal cases that are being updated all the time. And a huge deal for lawyers, it needs to provide precise citations for where the information came from. So, RAG or CAG? This is a total slam dunk for RAG. The knowledge base is massive and it's super dynamic, way too big and fast changing for CAG to handle. Plus, that requirement for citations, RAG handles that beautifully. The retrieval step itself naturally tells you the source of the information, which is absolutely essential in a legal context. Okay, last one. And this one's a little trickier. It's a clinical decision support system for doctors. It needs to access huge patient records and medical guides, but doctors also need to ask really complex, nuanced follow-up questions during a consultation. So what do you think? RAG or CAG? So the best answer here is, well, it's a bit of a trick question. It's both. You can actually use a hybrid approach. Think about it. You use RAG for what it's great at, searching that enormous database to find the exact patient records in the right medical articles. Then you take that perfectly curated little package of info and load it into a temporary CAG cache just for that one session. What you get is the best of both worlds, right? You get RAG's incredible search power up front and then CAG's lightning fast speed for a really smooth, in-depth conversation with the doctor. So it really all boils down to this. Think of RAG as your tool for navigating these vast, ever-changing oceans of data where you need to be able to pinpoint your sources. CAG, on the other hand, is perfect for these well-defined static little lakes of information where speed and simplicity are what you care about most. And this whole thing leaves us with a really fascinating question for the future. As the context windows of these AI models keep getting bigger and bigger, I mean, we're going from thousands of tokens to millions, is the need for a separate retrieval step going to start to just fade away? Are we heading towards a future where we retrieve less and simply cache more? It's a fundamental shift in thinking that could totally reshape how we build the next generation of AI applications.